What's up, guys? Palatina's Army, Episode 5. I'm Adrian, and I got and one I'm guest Harry. with me. Oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm Harry. Hi. All right. This he uh, Harry here writes for our website every now and then. He throws up a few articles here. Uh, Vane's not with us this week. He texted me like an hour or two ago saying he came down with some crazy sickness, so he should be listening to a lot of Disturbed, and he'll come back next week, I'm sure. Anyway, I actually wanted to speak to him about Portal 2, about yeah. how he... What did you have to... He'll listen to the podcast, so what did you have uh, to say well, about it? Um, I saw... When he says it drags on, like, I mean, chapter 6 and 7 are not really needed, but they create so much sort of, like, um, speculation about the backstory of it. Yeah. And it kind of... Feel, you do feel like it drags on, but it just gives you this whole idea that perhaps... What you see with Aperture Science and the whole story of the actual game is just there's so much more and it can be explored. There's just loads more to explore in the Portal story. And that's what I just think. Are I love you... the game. I've hundred percented it. Yeah, um, I haven't beat the game, you... so, so we'll keep away from spoilers for a bit. But are you? Um, yeah. Does that? Are, are you? Do you think there'll be a third one then? Um, it won't be with the main character, but you, you, but you don't know what Valve can do, but. You think they can, again, try not to be spoiler, but uh, you yeah. think, would it be on the, you said not with the main character, but do you think, how about on the, on the co-op side with the two little robots? Yeah, definitely. Okay. That's cool then. Um, this week on the website, we didn't have that much. Uh, I've been busy like crazy with other things, so this next week, I should have a lot done. Um, you did, oh, well, quick, we had Vane put up his Dynasty Warrior 7 review, so go read that. We'll have him talk about that next week. But you put up a article on why this year's E3 will be awesome. Yeah, I think with, because um, the, the lack of games that Microsoft has, I mean, for me, I mainly care about Microsoft's conference the most out of the three. Yeah. Although Nintendo's will probably be, you know, spectacular because it's a... It's the 8th gen. Do you think but, with all the PlayStation stuff that's been going down that Sony kind of shot themselves in the foot and that's going to be a lot of wasted time at their E3 talking about that? Um, are you talking about as in like PSN? Or yeah, because I, I think at their E3 they're going to have to address PSN. They can't just ignore yeah. it. Yeah, they definitely will. I mean, you know, because I mean, they um, apparently were supposed to be, uh, be back up today, but it's not. Yeah. And so they've still said, we don't know when it's actually going to be back up. They've got, actually got no idea. I think it's back up in Japan, though. I, there's I rumors about that, but I, I think they're on and off about what, it, what what's going on over there. But I, um, I think the main thing that's actually Sony's got the problem is, um, if you look at exclusive-wise this year, the one that um, everyone knows about is Sony, because they've got so many stuff to uh, stuff that's coming out that we already know about, so... It feels like most of their conference is going to be showing stuff that we already know. That's true. But, I mean, it, again, this whole year was supposed to be year of the PlayStation. I mean, it was all these exclusives coming out. It was supposed to be, like, a crazy year. But, I mean, with with the whole PlayStation getting hacked, like, the PS3 console getting hacked, uh, all the PSN troubles, it just feels like it's kind of like a downward spiral. Yeah, because, I mean, it was all going perfect for Sony. You know, they I don't think, if I'm, if I'm correct, they, um, they never it was not possible to pirate um, a game on the PS3 or something like that. It was like it was not possible to do it until um, GeoHot posted that root key thing and that jailbroken... Because, yeah, I mean, if, if you'd ever played Modern Warfare 2 on the Xbox, you would know the Xbox had has had this problem for years. But I think it's only just recently began to happen for Sony and now, obviously. Well, the, uh, the biggest the difference thing. with with uh the xbox is yeah it gets hacked but i mean what you can't get on xbox live with that though it, it's it's a lot easier for them to figure out if that there's a hacker around them yeah i mean also i've noticed you know um the i think the, one of the main things that i like about microsoft is they're very sort of um active with their community in a way like um you know they've got all the people on Websites like Twitter, Xbox support, all of them. So if you ever do identify a problem, I mean, like, um, I remember one of my friends, he hacked um, his game score. He modded his game score. And what happened was, was one of my other friends in spite sent an email. Uh, no, actually, it was an Xbox Live message to um, E saying, gave him the 
the, na- the game attack on my other friend, and he got um, reset, his gamer score reset, his gamer zone set to cheater within an hour of the message getting sent. Yeah, not not only that, but I mean, even attacks, there are panels of the Xbox Live security force. I, they, they, I mean, it, it. I don't want to go through the whole. You get what you pay for, but I mean, yeah, you do pay a little. You pay more for. You pay for Xbox Live, and in essence, they end up turning that around, and they they are a lot more active with their service. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, so, I mean, there, there's about this E3 is going to be kind of kind of weird. I mean, we. Usually when the consoles come out, I mean, there's always, like, a year difference. So, I mean, Nintendo kind of forged themselves a... They, they kind of forged the new generation here and kind of went behind everyone's back. Do you, so, there was also a rumors about a new Xbox being talked about this, this E3. Are you ready for the next generation here? Um, well, as, a main, as mainly a PC kind of person, yeah, I am, sort of. Because when I'm looking at the... When you compare something like the PC to the Xbox, I mean, um, if you look at something like L.A. Noir, have you heard about that? About yeah. the discs? Yeah, it's, it's three discs. Three discs on the Xbox, which, I mean, I've heard about Microsoft uh, with this new update thing, uh, the preview one. Yeah. Um, apparently, they're going to increase the size on the DVD disc by, like, one gig. Yeah, so... But even then, that's not enough. So, well, I mean, it, 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 that, that's a different thing because right now Microsoft has a limit on, like, 7 gigs of a disk that you can use. So, yeah. and, and this update is going to bring about 10 gigs around there of use. So, essentially, Microsoft's adding about 3 or 4 gigs on their limit, which, I mean, that, that, made it, that can make the difference of Mass Effect being on 1 or 2 disks. Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2 is right now about 6.7 gigs. And with that extra four gigs, it probably would have been on one disc. I think but with, with um, the Mass Effect and with the extra discs, um, I think the main thing that I don't like about discs, I'm fine with discs as long as it doesn't break the immersion of the game. Yeah. So for me, with Mass Effect 2, I thought it, the last mission you had to switch discs, and it gave it that sort of feeling of epicness that you had to sort of switch the disc to be able to... Yeah, I, I uh, still feel like... Switch. I'm not. I'm not really lazy about it. I mean, the the same thing happened in Resident Evil Four. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And I mean, you you were on the island. This is it. You were leading up to the end, and you switched that final disc in for only that chapter. It, I I don't mind it that much. I mean, uh, it, it it I could see why it's a problem, but personally, it's not a big deal to me unless we start getting to like four or five discs. Yeah, as soon as I think Lost Odyssey has four discs. See, like that's a problem, but I mean, if it's if it's two and three is a stretch, I, I'm not that that big on that. But so so you're you're saying the uh, the way PC looks against the 360 now that that that's kind of indicating that we should get to a new generation here. Yeah, especially when um, I think also from a business point of view for Microsoft as well, not less, not just from a technology point of view, but are they because they're they're saying. Um, they want the they wanted the Xbox to last ten years, which means it'd be 2015. The new console, if the Nintendo console releases in 2012, that leaves a three-year gap. Will Microsoft really want to give um, Nintendo that three-year advantage? See, there's a lot of complications here, though. It's like, okay, so essentially with this new Nintendo console, if it is all that we think, but I mean, even even now, just a quick tangent that. It's supposed to be rumored to be only eight gigs of onboard H or hard drive. Which is not. I think it's flash, flash memory, isn't it? I th- yeah. I'm not even sure, but it's only eight gigs, which is it's a lot more than the Wii. But I mean, that's that's still pitiful compared to what we have now. And I mean, it, it's but assume that out of the way, assuming this this new Nintendo console is all the all the the tech galore that we want, that essentially takes away what the PS3 and 360 are at their core, where they were supposed to be the powerhouse of this generation. And yeah, I, I mean, they, um, go ahead. With the the, the Pro- Project Cafe, I think it's called, is actually rumored to be, um, its GPU is rumored to be three times as powerful as the PS3s, and its CPU is supposed to be twice as powerful. Yeah. Now, when the PS3 came out, it used the Cell multiprocessor, which at the time was sort of revolutionary. It's like one of the best processors you can get. It's even, I think it's one better than um, any practically all PCs at that time as well. So... If this Project Cafe thing, if, if the rumors are true about the process and power, then it is probably going to be a powerhouse. But if it's early, then you're going to, 
it gives you that thought that perhaps what um, Microsoft and Sony have is going to be even better. Yeah, and that that leads me to question like, would Microsoft and and Sony just release something three years down the line and make Nintendo's console be outdated? I mean, this this new console can make everything lopsided from now on. It, it's really weird to think about. Yeah, especially when you think, because um, Microsoft uh, were the first ones to release in the seventh gen, weren't they, with um, the Xbox? Yeah. In two thousand five, even then, even though it released a year after the Wii, still, you know, I mean, it was obviously the novelty of the Wii, the motion, like the first seventh yeah. gen console um, I got was the Wii because I was really excited at having, you know, being able to motion control, and then, then I realised that actually it's not. The best. Yeah, that's that's my thought too. But I mean, it, it also the price that that was a big factor of the Wii being out was the price. And well, I Nintendo likes to make a profit off their consoles. I mean, the the, the 3DS I think it's rumored to take like 100, 150 to make, and they're selling for 250. Nintendo likes to make a profit, and I, that worries me about how everything. You know, you got these controllers that have a screen on them and all that. I wonder how much all these are going to take. Or how much it's going to cost in general, but I mean, it, it could be about three hundred, four hundred dollars, sure. But I mean, Nintendo also has the the power now, the money to really sell these at a loss and essentially just get a big start for them this next generation. Yeah, that that is what they need. But I think when you think about this touch screen as a controller, how uh, is just the implementation of it is just conf- just so confuses me as to how it will actually work. How will it actually, you know? Yeah. So, change the games you need i mean I, d- I don't when i'm playing something like halo i don't feel like i need a, a touch screen or anything and if it was do you think perhaps it could be in fact in the way of everything because i mean that's a, a massive thing that people um don't like about connect or move or in you know the Wii is that they don't like motion control they just prefer a gamepad and Perhaps even though it will be on a gamepad, do you think it could still be in the way? Yeah, that's that's pretty much everyone's thought right now is that it, it is a six-inch screen and we don't know to what extent or how the controller looks. And it's supposed to be exactly like a, a regular controller, but I mean, I I can't. Maybe it might be fine. I mean, maybe it, it's essentially the screen. It's just the you, it'll just revert to maybe a, a home button if you want to do that or anything like if you want to quit. What I think would be neat is like you know how you got the Xbox guide button, you can pop that in. Maybe yeah. they can maybe they can turn that into maybe a guide but or guide like you can quick launch a game from your screen. If if, if or that's perhaps the actual guide experience is just integrated into the touch screen. Yeah, if if, if it's more like that, that's fine because you got everything there. But I mean, it, it just uh, and and even then, I feel like it wouldn't be a problem. But that thing isn't. I, I think it's six inches, isn't it? Yeah, I've I've heard that, and, but. Six inches is quite. I'm trying to work out how big the actual controller itself. Yeah, that's. Like, I mean, we all got. We are all fine with the the controller, but I mean, again, I, I can also see the fact that I mean, would we all get bored of the controller by this point? I mean, yeah, you're get, you're getting new experiences with the with the tech, but I mean, essentially, we. I feel like they can use that for more integration than the innovation. Yeah, I agree, but um, also with um, the way Nintendo, Nintendo recently have sort of had this novelty kind of aspect to their products so for example um the wii and the 3ds and in fact even the ds you know the touch screen of the ds the 3d of the 3ds and the motion of the wii um how will will this novelty aspect be in the um project cafe and what will it actually be because you're trying to think what could they do more if they wanted to add a novelty aspect to it because i'm thinking perhaps they may just keep with this motion control aspect that that leads us to a question though what are the 360 can the ps3 and 360 get by on brute force this next generation or, yeah i mean i mean nintendo stepping up with this new thing i mean it, it's it's still something new can can sony with the ps4 or whatever the next xbox is called can they just get by with this like can they just make a lot of tech and be done with it i, I don't know if that's going to pass this time because these last generations have been like significantly better but i mean and yeah we still have we still have room for another one or two generations of realism on the consoles, i believe but i mean yeah. to the naked eye i think the last this generation from the last generation is going to be the last biggest jump i think yeah because i mean when when i'm looking at sort of 
graphics of a game. And I mean, um, if I'm when when looking at a game, I sort of think to myself, when will the graphics of a game be pushed to actual reality? Yeah. And, you know, when will it actually look real? Because there's going to be a limit as to where, because, you know, real life in itself, it doesn't get prettier or prettier like graphics do. So eventually, the graphics of the game is going to have to reach this um, this boundary, this hit this um, part where it meets reality. And, uh, you know, when will we be there? But, you know, reality isn't necessarily needed. Um in a game, for me, it's just the gameplay. And as long as, as long as I can see what the devs trying to do with the graphics, like for example, with a game like Mirror's Edge, it doesn't look real, but it looks astounding. The actual art style. So as long as I know what the devs doing with the graphics, I'm fine with that. Yeah, and it, it, essentially, when we reach our point, is when we can get games like Fallout and Grand Theft Auto to look basically realistic. Yeah, Th- those games are huge, but I mean, they don't look that great graphically. I mean, I thought, well, GTA was at the time it was. Oh, GTA Four like, looked great at the time, but going back to that now, it's it's not, it's not, it it's fine. Like I'm not going to be a graphics snob about it, but I mean, it's still it, it can use improvement. You can see the the room for improvement there. Yeah, and uh, they did kind of meet that improvement with Red Dead Redemption. And they probably will with LA Noir. Oh yeah, well. th- those are those are definitely be improvement. But I feel like GTA, like Red Dead, is fine because there's not there's not a lot to the land, you know. Like you'll yeah. go through a small town, but I mean GTA, there's there's buildings everywhere and all that. I feel like there's still a little bit of stuff that we can do there. Yeah, I agree. Um, with Fallout, yeah, that that for a game that released in 2010, New Vegas was probably the most ugly looking game I've played. Yeah, and I mean. It's it's huge, so I mean you could you gotta write it off for that. But I mean like once we get to a game like where Fallout can be super realistic, and when Fallout can look like Crisis, that's when I think we got our, our limit there. Yeah, once you've got this massive landscape and it's got these, you know, these fantastic graphics and all that kind of effects. Yeah. I mean, if you've seen, um, I think for me the game that looks to have the best graphics this year, it's probably going to be it's out. There's two games that look astounding to me. Um, Deus Ex: Human Revolution. Uh, not sure if you've seen anything on that. Uh huh. Not really. Um, although it's although it's not really most of it from what we've seen is graphics, more pre-rendered CGI. What we have seen the graphics does look really good. And um, Battlefield Three. Battlefield Three does look good. I think Battlefield Three might give Crisis Two a run for its money the way it's it's coming out to be. Yeah, especially how I think that um, EA are now starting to use because I know they recently announced a new Need for Speed game, which is going to be using Frostbite Two. Yeah. So perhaps we will see more EA games using having much better graphics. And see, that's that's kind of the thing is that people say that we reached our limits. So I mean, we Crisis Two I think is the peak of the console graphics. I think that I, this I don't generation. Yeah, the generation. And I feel like the people say, "All right, we reached our peak. Now it's time for the next." I feel like we can we can prolong that to the point where we start getting a year's worth of Crisis Two looking games. Yeah. You know, so I mean, yeah, we we got the highest, the, the best looking game now. I feel like we can we can keep that going for until like another good two years. I mean, I want to see an, I, I want to see some good racing games. I want to see some good looking sports games. Like like there there's so much room for improvement for other games outside of that. Yeah, um, like if you if you take uh, with sort of real life sort of um, games because there are games that try to mimic real life. Yeah. Um, I'm not talking about like Call of Duty, but I'm talking about you know FIFA, Madden, those games. If they can really can push those, you know, I think even just um, something like Elie Noir, the technology that they're using with that can be used um, for other games. You know, with the uh, for the facial capture and with people like uh, Remedy Entertainment saying that they're using this technology. Uh, I can't remember. I recently read someone else is saying that they're oh it's Assassin's Creed. They're using the new, on the new Assassin's Creed game. They're using technology they reckon could be anywhere. They could put that into um, sports games. And yeah, like there, there's so much. Games. Yeah, there's so much other genres they can go into to really make this a, 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 a prolonged generation. The other thing is though is that um, if with with this amazing technology, obviously it's going to take longer for. Um, games to be developed for for example Alan Noir has been in development for seven years and so I if, if, the, 
for better tech, you know, perhaps it may mean longer development cycles. Uh, it, it, yeah, you know what? That, it's kind of a sketchy thing, though. I mean, assuming La Noir, uh, like, yeah, you got longer development times, but I mean, La Noir is going to be, uh, it's going to be highly acclaimed. And, it's good. and also, the game in itself is from from what you're looking at and considering how it is like a a GTA S game. It is going to be huge in terms of length of the actual um, oh. game. That's probably one thing that's infected it. Yeah, the death cycle. Yeah, I, it's I, I yeah, it's 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 a weird topic. I mean, we've seen game it's we've seen games in long development t- times that like Duke Nukem that aren't really going to be that great. Well, I mean, it'll be it, I'm sure Duke Nukem's going to be fine, but I mean, but it, like, looks, it looks fun. Yeah, it look it looks fun, but I mean, it's not going to be anything groundbreaking. We can we can pretty much say it's that. Um, yeah. but I mean, again, then we got games like L.A. Noir. I mean, where that it, it will be kind of, it, it will be a lot more of a game changer. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think L.A. Noir's... Oh, go ahead. With the, the time it's taken for that is, has to do with the tech, but with something like Duke Nukem Forever, that's just got to go through financial reasons and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so let's go, let's backtrack a little. What will it take for you, what will it, are you ready for a new Nintendo console? Are you going to buy it day one? What, what will Nintendo need to make you want to buy this day one? They will need the games. Like, for you to, to have good, for good hardware to be, you know, to be seen well, you need good software. They need to work together. So, and, uh, know, if they can bring out these great games at launch, which, you know, it's not really a very, uh, it's not really a thing that's seen, uh, that's happened quite well, which is having good launch games uh, when a console releases. You know, look at the 3DS. The do, you, do, you think the Wii, do you think the Wii had a good launch? Um, they had, I think they had The Legend of Zelda, they had Twilight Princess, but other than that, Wii Sports, Wii Play, that was... You know. See, Wii Sports, Zelda, Rayman, Red Steel was good for, like, that time, and yeah. I, I feel like those were good, that, that was a good variety, enough to keep people busy. Um, but I think if Nintendo, Nintendo haven't said who their target audience is for this generation, because... They they only said that they're going to release it. They're going to show it off at E3. That was that's all. It's like just a few words in their investment thing. But yeah. um, it, it depends on who their audience is, who they're trying to target at. Because it was mainly the casuals with the Wii. I mean, as the Wii sort of progressed, they did then try to make the hardcores enjoy it with games like Mario Galaxy. Although um, it isn't seen as like a like a, a hardcore game because you've got these people who expect guns and stuff to make it hardcore it was a very fun game i, I enjoyed it compared to something like where my um, like my mum she has some fitness game for the week so it's this balance of hardcore and casual which they need to get correct for the um the next console yeah and um do you have have you been like actively buying games on the Wii? No, I haven't bought a game on the Wii for about a year. Would you say that's because of the quality of titles, or would you say because personally, I think the Wii had I think one of the best years of of its genera- of its like console span last year. But I mean, um, it, it's not. I, I'm I didn't I didn't buy any of those Wii games though because I don't personally like purchasing full price games. Um, I'm I'm fine with um, buying full price games, um, but at the time, like, um, I thought Super Mario Galaxy Two looked good. I thought Donkey Kong Country Returns looked good, but for me, I think what it mainly was was um, other games on different systems. Yeah, that's true. And the fact how when you know when when you had uh, some like. Uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns that came out, which I thought looked pretty fun. You had, you know, a Halo, you had a Call of Duty, you had all these big yeah. blockbuster games for other systems. And, and I, also, I, when, when I buy games, I just sort of feel... Um, there's there's a bit of peer pressure as well. Yeah. So, you know, if your friend buys... If you have loads of people that you know that buy Halo Reach, you're more likely to be inclined to buy Halo Reach than you would 
get Donkey Kong Country Returns. Yeah, that's definitely the reason why I uh, I bought I, I got Red Dead. I was going to get Galaxy Two, but I ended up changing my mind last second to get Red Dead because I had a a few people that on my on my uh, my my friends list that want to play Red Dead instead. So I I think that made a big big uh, yeah I think peer pressure does, but I mean I still feel like. Donkey Kong Country and Galaxy 2 were games that I really wanted to invest into. Do you regret the decision you made about um, Red Dead? And no, Galaxy Red 2? Red Dead. I I, I would have. I'm sure I would have gotten more time out of, especially because of Undead Nightmare. But I feel like uh, I I still feel price is the biggest thing. I mean, I I I bought three full price games last year. I bought Halo Reach. I bought. Bad Company 2, and Dead Rising 2. And all three of those games... Oh, oh, Bad Company was basically just full-on peer pressure, but I feel like Halo Halo and Dead Rising are two of my favorite franchises. So I'm not going to pass those up. And, I mean, I, w- I would love to get more games, but they were just not cheap. I'm, I'm a, I'm a re- really... I'm a gamer that looks for, like, cheap prices. I mean, I bought one Wii game last year, and that was Rabbids Go Home, because it was 20 bucks, And... I, Nintendo just recently announced that they were doing um, the uh, is it cl- the classics thing. Yeah, yeah, where they were doing the, the games. Sort of thing. Yeah, so like Twilight Princess is going down to twenty bucks. Uh, Animal Crossing, which I might buy now. Like I, I, I might end up just buying a lot more Wii games now because they're all twenty bucks. I'm not spending like fifty dollars on a game like that. And I'm not uh, saying they're bad games. It's just that I find so much more. I, I try to get a lot out of my games, and those. The ones on 360 are just naturally longer because of the online play and the achievements and all that. It, you know, like, the Wii doesn't have that. Uh, for me, you know, I I, I buy games, uh, full price games, that I think look good. I mean, um, Fable Three. When I bought it, I bought it on launch day, and that was forty pounds. That was sixty dollars. I paid for it, and I think the. The, I, I completed it the day after um, I bought it, and so then I kind of regret my re- regretted my purchase. And then I looked online and for I found um, uh, Fallout New Vegas for twenty pound, which was which I think is thirty dollars, which yeah. I thought was really good for about a hundred hour game to pay like thirty dollars worth for for that compared to Fable Three, which asked me about. Eight hours. Yeah. Which cost me um, about sixty dollars. Yeah. Quick tangent. Sorry if there's a lot of talking in my background. That's fine. Um. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go back to something that I kind of wanted to bring up. Uh, do you feel like Nintendo needs something like achievements on their system? Yeah. They, they need. To, they need. Um. I think. I think in, achievements is is something that's important because. Um, you know, it, it gives you more of a reason to go out and play games because I know reading your Twitter feed, you're a bit of an achievement fan. Yeah. Uh, and you know, recently, I, I with Portal Two on, although it was on PC, I purposely played Portal Two again just to get achievements and purposely added people on my friends list to do certain things to play to get achievements. Um, but I think. One of the main reasons why the achievement system works on 360 PS3 Steam is because you've got friends who are also getting achievements. Yeah, and they're so, they're basically just to compare. And, yeah, and oh, go ahead. That was the thing that sort of made the achievements popular because that point of comparison. So they're going to need a good network as well to sort of make the uh, the system better. Yeah. And and honestly, and to piggyback that, we're also going to need a, a hefty online system, and we can't have friend code on the system. Yeah, because I think if I'm correct, you had a friend code on that a, you had to didn't you had to add p- different people on different games or something? Uh, on the Wii, you, have, you there's a bunch of different friend codes. So for every game, there's a different friend code. The DS it improved because all you need is one friend code, but I I feel like on the handheld that's whatever. Okay, but. If you're gonna make the full-on console, they they need a gamer tag or something like that to to really hold everything together. You can't have a friend code on that console. Yeah, because if you meet someone, you can eat like especially something you can associate that like you you know. So, for example, 
if you find someone who has like an Xbox, you can just say, "This is my gamer tag." But if if you had someone like a Wii, you'd have to like you can't really memorize. Yeah, code, you don't memorize those numbers. Yeah, so I I mean it, it with this console like that again. It's what's coming out to. It's the console supposed to be high tech. So I mean, it, they, Nintendo has to get with the times here and yeah. really show off that they can do this online thing. Yeah, um, I think for me that was the main thing that held the Wii back the network. Yeah. Um. So, what what are you expecting on Nintendo? Like, do you expect anything on the Wii or? I think they'll give the Wii something, something great to to finish it off. Because I, I can, aren't there? I can see Skyward Sword being popular. Aren't there rumors that this is going to release this next spring? This console. I'm I'm not sure. If, if, all I know is that it's 2012. It probably will. I, I can see it mainly releasing, probably releasing spring or maybe the end for Christmas. It's going to be one yeah, of those two. Yeah, I release early or really late. Yeah, and uh, if this is if it's if it releases next spring, then this is the E3 that Nintendo has to show everything off because they're not going to have another E3 to really show off this brand new thing. Um, I've I've heard you know speculation like Skyward Sword is going to be delayed and and it's not going to be delayed. I, it's going to be put onto um, Project Cafe. I I no, really I, I, can't I mean it's possible, but I really don't think so since I mean Skyward Sword was essentially like. Skyward Sword is essentially a Wii game like that. It's it's built for the motion controls. Yeah, it is. It's it's not Zelda as we know it. It's yeah. Waggle basically. Yeah, I feel the, like the they're gonna want to they're gonna want to keep the sorry for interrupting, but they're gonna want to keep the uh, they're gonna want to keep Zelda Skyward Sword on motion control, especially because they got that new style of like the water paint. That that doesn't really show off the the the, the power of anything. So this ne- whatever Zelda is on the next console, that's gonna have to be like super graphic, graphical. Like, everything's gonna have to go full on realistic. But I feel like this this Skyward Sword isn't that. All I hope they don't do with Project Cafe is they remake games, because that that's what annoys me. I with feel- the 3DS, Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time 3D, you know, you played Nintendo, you played it on Nintendo 64, you enjoyed it on Nintendo 64, but with the 3D, well, when they just put onto port it onto the 3DS, if it doesn't, you know, it kind of takes away what's special about the game. This is that's true, and I I just feel like they can get away with it though because it's a handheld too and it's a different market, and it the, the, it has a 3D um it has a 3D gimmick on it, but I don't know if they can get away with that on this next thing. I mean, what they can't title with HD at the end of it. I don't yeah, think that's I just a, that's I don't enough. I mean. Perhaps if they if they rebooted franchises, and they reboot stuff, know, I'm totally fine that. with that. But I mean, like I feel like they this is totally open for new experiences. I mean, granted, they can be another Mario game and all that. There are going to be other Mario games, but I feel like this is suited for brand new things. Yeah, um, but also I think Nintendo have still got with for the Wii. They have still got some games so got their sleeves. You know, there was a. Um, there was sort of a, a quiet Kirby announcement. Yeah, there's supposed to be another Kirby game too. Because Kirby was quite popular. Well, Kirby's Epic Yarn was quite popular. What's quite odd about this new Kirby game is that Epic Yarn was like the best, the best, highest rated Kirby game, and that's and um, that's probably because of its unique style. Yeah, it's but definitely unique style. Now they're going back style. to old Kirby. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be weird. I don't think Epic Yarn sold as well as everyone's thinking either. Yeah. But it, it did get high acclaim. Um, and sometimes acclaim isn't enough though. Yeah. And what about Microsoft? Since Sony's gonna be talking about their PlayStation Network for parts of this. Uh, oh god, we got a vacuum here. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna pause here and we're gonna come back in a second. In a second. Uh. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, I totally picked the wrong day to record. Apparently, it's the day we're doing spring cleaning. Anyway, uh, so, Harry, what do you think that Microsoft needs to do at this? Because, I mean, Sony's got the PlayStation Network news to talk about. Nintendo's going to obviously go full-on Project Cafe. Microsoft isn't really known for having exclusives this year. So what, what exactly do you think they have? I think they'll have something that will blow us away. Um 
because I mean, I can see them. They're, 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 they have because they're like Sony. Because Sony go, it's like, you know, they've done it before. They they always do it. Sony do where they show off all their games before E3, and they don't really give us much surprises. You know. Yeah. Last year, the only surprise really was Twisted Metal was back. Yeah. Um, but Microsoft don't really, you know, let us know about their uh, their sort of surprises. Um, except for last year when we got like just before we got a uh, we saw an advert for the Xbox, but you know, it's still a shock. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to see some of Codename Kingdoms, which is that Crytek game. Oh yeah. That one kind of just went under the radar because they didn't have anything for that last year. I think it was it was um, it was like a uh, just a just sort of pre rendered. I think it was pre rendered CGI. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was just it, it it literally wasn't anything. So yeah, maybe that that's coming to fruition now. Uh, I think we're obviously going to see you know the obvious thing we're going to see is Gears of War three that we're going to see probably going to see a new Call of Duty game. Do you think uh, we're going to... Yeah, they'll probably show off new Call of Duty there at, at the Microsoft press. Do you think that they're going to make a big uh, deal about this rumored Halo? Yeah, I can see it happening because I, I'm not sure whether it'll be an actual remake or if it'll be an entire new game, but I think it's about time that 343 showed us something because we we need to see something off 343. Um, yeah, because they're, they're not a proven studio, huh? They, yeah, they, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. I'm, I'm trying to wonder: Are they right to have Halo? You know, are they all right to um, still be the developers of the next Halo? I mean, they. I think they did the um, Defiant Map Pack for Halo Reach. They they co-developed that with um, a certain affinity. Yeah, and I'm not sure if they've taken uh, taken sort of the the responsibilities of Halo Reach's management now. I. I'm not sure if Bungie does that still or what, but no. Um, I yeah, they aren't anything. And I mean, but you know what though? If they remake Halo One, I think that might be something that might t- prove to a lot of Halo kids like me that you know what this company can do it. But if they do it wrong, then it will they make do you it think wrong. They can't do it. That it's, it's a big shoe to step in, and I feel like if they do it wrong, that's going to leave everyone in a sour note because we haven't seen anything from them. The most they've done that's that's notable is Halo Waypoint. Yeah, and that's not a game. Uh, so I mean, it's interesting. They got a lot. They, but you know what? That studio is a powerhouse right now. They've got a lot of people. Like it's funny because I, I don't know what they're doing, but they've got a lot of people just in that studio that are notable. They, yeah, they've got um, a lot of ex Bungie members, but also. They're, they're really sort of, they're not they're not just taking control of Halo as the game, but they're also taking it as a franchise. You know, they released Halo Evolutions two years ago. Yeah. They've got all, they're now the guys who are doing the books now, the new Four and a Saga books, I think they're called. Yeah. They've got another book, book uh, set of books coming out, so they're sort of taking full control. And I remember Frank O'Connor was saying that um, the... Uh, the Halo movie is a matter of when rather than if. So we, we're probably going to see them taking full sort of control over uh, the Halo franchise. And so perhaps they'll they'll consider that while also um, when they're developing it, perhaps we'll see something different because from what from the books and stuff, they're not really tied to the main sort of Bungie Halo story. Yeah, they're really just an out, outside kind of look into it. Yeah, the more backstory creating kind of thing. Yeah. So I expect I expect them to not – if it's not a Halo HD, what they're making, I can't see it being a direct sequel to um, Halo 3. I can't see it you know, being part of that story arc. I mean, the Halo 3 legendary ending did make you think, you know, what was that planet that was in the background? Yeah, the the trilogy of of Master Chief and Halo is done, but there there is room for Master Chief's story to continue on. Yeah, especially with the way the whole thing ended. Yeah, um, I can see it more kind of being more like a like a Halo Reach kind of thing, where it sort of more serves it serves more as a backstory kind of element. Then. Yeah, and I I don't know what it can do though, because I mean. 
depending because we still don't know what that planet is at the end. In case anyone here hasn't isn't a Halo fan, and usually at the end of Halo games, there's a legendary ending. If you beat it on the hardest difficulty, you'll see a little snippet of a of a new ending. And on Halo 3's was uh, after you escape from the Ark, um, Master Chief's uh, uh, ship gets gets half and half. So one half goes to Earth with the Arbiter on it, the, the alien that you, you play as also. And the other half is Master Chief's side, and he just gets kind of thrown in space. And on the regular ending, you see just him and, and Cortana just kind of talking and whatever. And, and, and on the legendary ending, you see their their ship drifting towards like this this mysterious planet that we that no one could really figure out. It's it's really up in the air because it was it, it was like that ending was like an extra seven seconds, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was pretty much seconds. like under ten seconds. So I mean, it, it it leaves it ambiguous for another Halo. But I mean, if that's it, that that can't, it's not going to essentially be a Halo game, you know? Because there's not going to be Covenant in it. There's the flood's gone. And assuming on that ship, you only have, like, two weapons with you. Yeah. It, so it, you can't really see what they're going to do with that. I mean, personally, you know, how we, practically everyone sort of creates their own sort of speculation. I I kind of think that um, that planet was simply a restoration of Reach. Because in the Halo Reach ending, to yeah. those that don't know, it they're actually rebuilding Reach. Yeah, it gets rebuilt after, after the whole... So that could sim- thing, that planet could simply just be a restoration of Reach. That that it, it could be, but then again, when you look at the planet, it looks really mechanical, you know. And that that that's a really big kickback to the books. But then again, like I don't see why. I mean, yeah, it, it's kind of it, it, Onyx is one of the books thing, and it was it was a planet made up of uh, Sentinels, and that yeah. that that's that's one of the biggest theories right now. But I mean. I don't see how that could have any relevance to people who just play the game. Because even in, in the first Halo, you get Reach mentioned, like, once. So, I mean, you have an idea of what Reach is, but there is no mention of Onyx whatsoever. Yeah, um, but also, perhaps, perhaps the next Halo game. I, I'm not sure if it'll actually be a first-person shooter. I, I don't know why, but I just have this feeling that the next one will be sort of a... If it's going to be the next Halo game, I, I think it's going to be a new... Um, sort of a Halo Wars kind of thing. Yeah, the next... If it's Halo 4, like, continuing Master Chief, again, like I said, like, it can't be a Halo game because everything, essentially, Halo is gone at that point. I, I feel like you can make Master Chief do something else, but uh, if it's Halo 1, it, it's... It, it'll be more of the same, but, I mean, it, it, Halo 1 is such a, a treasure to a lot of people, and even Halo 2 is, but Halo 1 has the story in it, behind it, and it has a multiplayer in it, so I feel like they're... There is such a void in there that if 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 three four three messes this up, I don't know if what credibility they're gonna have to all the Halo fanboys out there. Yeah, because I've got some friends who are massive Halo fanboys, but um, they they're very sort of wary as to what three four three are gonna do. Yeah, and I think I think ODST and Reach have kind of proven that a Halo game doesn't need Master Chief. Yeah. And I don't think I think you know Halo. Although although Bungie made games before Halo, and I think for, they're quite popular games as well. Yeah, but Oni and Myth were part of this marathon. marathon. Yeah, but um, so you know Halo is kind of like Bungie's treasured possession, you know, and so and especially but mainly it's the Master Chief kind of Halo. When you think of Halo. You don't really think of um, Halo Wars, do you? No. You, know, you don't. You don't really think of the strategy game. You just think of Bungie as Halo. That's what you. Um, for me, I immediately associate Bungie with Halo. So they can't mess anything up with what Bungie's done. Yeah, that it, it's it's very sacred ground. We're gonna have to see what they're gonna do with that. Um. Yeah, so I guess that... Do we have anything else to elaborate on that? Um, uh, with the Halo, um, I, I can't really see much. I think I think it's going to be more of a prequel than a sequel. The or, new Halo game? Yeah, the next Halo game. Because, I mean, well, yeah, there, there is room for more prequels. I mean, yeah, Reach was the beginning of, of, of the, the Master Chief arc. 
but I mean, it goes back to like contact harvest where you can have you be playing as you can play as Johnson if you really really want to. And I think if if I'm right, um, Halo Wars is actually if you put them in Halo uh, chronology. So Halo Wars is the beginning of everything. Yeah, Halo Wars is the beginning. I think it's 20 years before Reach, or is it 20 years before Combat Evolved? It, it's the same thing. Uh, Combat Evolved takes place literally, like, right after Reach. Yeah, just after Reach, yeah. Yeah, I, you, you segue into, into Halo 1. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, with regards back to, all the way back to Microsoft, and, uh, sort of going off this massive Halo tangent, um, I honestly can't can't think of what else Microsoft like, for definite what Microsoft are going to show off. But they're going to, there's going to be a new update to Xbox Live. Yeah, you know, they do that every sort of every year. They they'll show off something new with Xbox Live, even though last year's was just um, uh, ESPN really, other than the Kinect stuff. For we're gonna Xbox Live. we're gonna hear about the summer of arcade lineup. I think. Yeah, I can see. Actually, I can see Shadow Complex Two being announced. You know what? Shadow Complex Two would be a good announcement. I, I summer. It's funny because I'm not particularly interested in Microsoft's lineup besides Gears of War Three. I, I don't have a Connect. I, I don't plan on buying one for a while. But I mean, I, it's it's all about the Xbox Live Arcade to me right now. And I I, I feel like Summer of Arcade is basically the one thing that'll get me hyped up for Microsoft's lineup. Because you know what? We're gonna see probably Shadow Complex Two. I feel like that's kind of a given. I think we'll all see um, we'll all see uh, Battle Block Theater finally. That that yeah. might be a summer of arcade. I feel that that's perfect. That's a perfect thing for summer of arcade. Um, I can see there being another Play Dead game. Yeah, Play Dead. You know what? I think reading on that, it, it was going to take a couple years for them. But we might. It, it's possible, but I think we might. It might be another year to see that. But I'm actually interested in what they'll have to do. Apparently, the last thing I heard was that you, this next game doesn't look anything like Limbo, but you'll know it has the aesthetic of Limbo. Ah, uh, so uh, yeah. Yeah, like you'll know it's from them. Yeah. So I, um, I'm interested. I could also see uh, uh, another, n- not a new Fable, but a new game by the guys who make Fable by Lionhead. Possibly. There's a lot that Microsoft can announce, and they like to keep their card... They're like Nintendo, where they keep their cards to themselves until E3. Sony's really the only one that that just spouts everything beforehand. But we'll have to see what's what's coming up. I, I'm I'm really excited for the press conferences this year. Yeah, f- um, for me, I think um, there's two of them that are all right for my time, like the five o'clock my time, which is optimum time. Unfortunately, I probably won't be able to watch the the Sony one because I'll be fast asleep then because I think it's like because it's quite late, isn't it, the Sony one? I to, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure. I think it's it's I think it's about five p.m. Pacific, which is about one o'clock in the morning, uh, GMT. Yeah. So compared to other conferences, it's you. It's actually quite um, it's actually quite late. But also I've noticed there's, there's been a because obviously with the new console announcement, there's been a, a sort of a change in um in scheduling of the conferences, because usually it goes Microsoft on the first day, and on the second day it's Nintendo, and so- Nintendo then Sony. But this year it's going to be Microsoft then Sony, and then the following day it's going to be Nintendo. I feel like Microsoft and Sony really need to take, you need to step it up to take the wind out of the Project Cafe, since we know that thing is going to be there. It, it's confirmed. Yeah. But I, I, I can't see... There are people speculating a new sort of console announcement. I can't from Microsoft and Sony. I can't see that. Happening. I would personally be disappointed if that was the case. Yeah, I I feel like that'll be next year. Yeah, not to be redundant, but we we we've set our points about why we're we're not exactly ready for that. Yeah. Um. All right. So GarageBand's starting to slow down on me. So we'll we'll finish up here on what exactly we we got to say. Um. Really quick, I guess. Uh. What what games have you been playing recently? Um, I've I've just been literally just been playing Halo Reach uh, and Portal, but I've got send um, Bethesda give me uh, give me a review code thing for Brink. Oh, nice! Now that looks like a really fun game. Looks really different. Looks like a quite a colourful take on first person shooters, and it just looks really really fun for me. Yeah, I, I I'm not particularly like super excited for it, but I mean it's interesting to maybe see if I'll get to try that out. Um, yeah, 
the reviews are if if I wasn't getting it for um, if I wasn't getting the you know free copy of it uh, review one, then I would be very sort of um, I'd be watching the reviews more. Yeah. Of it. Uh, how's Reach treating you? I played Reach last night for the first time in a while, and it was it was still pretty good. I I personally like the community maps more than the bungee maps. Uh, me and my friends, um, we we. It's quite odd the way we play. We we have different things. So, for example, because they've done um, a, quite a big update recently. So, for example, Living Dead now has double players. Yes, yeah, wait, what? Which is which is quite fun now, and they've changed it so that um, there's now alpha zombie as well. Wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, wait. So, explain to me this. Oh, so basically, um, Living Dead. You are aware of Living Dead. Yeah, the zombies. It's, the zombies one. Yeah, um, it's originally six players in a match. Yeah. And two would start as a zombie. Two, two people would be the zombie, but now there's 12. Oh, nice. So now there's a lot more players, but now what they're doing is they've introduced an alpha zombie. So what alpha zombie is, is um, it's a zombie that is faster. And so when you start off, if you start off as a zombie, you're an alpha zombie. And that means that you are faster than normal zombies and uh, you've got a different armor. You have split, uh, sprint rather than evade. Because evade's really annoying on Living Dead because the the faster and low gravity means that you can sort of roll off maps. Yeah. Sometimes, but now if you it, as the alpha zombie, if you kill someone, then they'll spawn as a normal zombie rather than an alpha zombie. Okay, that's cool. I'll try. I'll, I'll play that a bit. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. And um, we also we also played um, Action Sack. Action Sack is good. Now that was fun. Um, we used to we used to only play it for hockey. Yeah. That that was like a really really fun game mode. If you can get a full team in hockey, then that is just it's probably one of the best game modes on Reach. Um, and then also we've been playing some we've been playing some chess on the custom games. Yeah. Because they've they've added that new sort of game mode called Insane, I think it is, and it allows for so many more sort of variants and allows so many more people. You know, a lot more control over what you want to do. Yeah, I'm things. planning on because I've still been pretty addicted to the Gears Three beta, so I'm planning on jumping back to to Reach once all. Yeah, I've been I've been Gears Three beta as well. That's I got that with um with the Bulletstorm. Yeah, it's, how are you enjoying it? I got Bulletstorm. Are you enjoying it? Oh, I think it's great. I think um, I quite like the maps. I mean, they need to they need to add more maps now. Yeah, I feel. Um, the, I, I hate the the tactic of roll sword off shotgun bang. That I, really does annoy me. I'm still annoyed whenever people try to wall bounce or they dive immediately after a shotgun blast or anything. That that stuff. I I don't know if there's a fix for that, but that's annoying. Um, that uh, the nasher needs to be toned down a bit. Honestly, like I'm starting I'm starting to nitpick at everything now, and the nasher definitely needs to be underpowered or uh, under like. It needs to be nerfed just a bit. I think it's, I think for for me the na- the only thing the Nasher is really is range. Yeah, the range. Is, well, yeah, even that. that that's basically what I mean is because that thing has a, has a lot of range, and even when you're trying to get away, when you're like far far away, you're still getting knocked down by that thing. Yeah, um, I I'm not sh- the the retro lancer. I think need, it's I'm, I'm not sure if that's really balanced because you sort of trade in accuracy for power with that weapon. Yeah, it, it's. I feel like it's it's still a little bit balanced because that that thing if you're up close I feel like that should be because that thing is kind of like like really short to medium range and that's enough to back off any oncoming shotguns or chainsaws. Yeah, um, the bayonet rush I think can, is also is quite annoying. I think. Yeah, that I, there, there's a few things with the retro lancer, but I'm not it's not as big of a nitpick to me as anything else. So um, you're just you're just an advocate against the the shotgun. Yeah, the Nash yeah. is my biggest problem right now. I'm gonna make an article just, about everything, and that that's basically my, my number one problem. And I just hate the sword off. The sword, you know what though? The sword off is really is really balanced. I think though, because that thing could take out as many people if they're grouped up. But the second you shoot, you gotta run or die dive out of the way or something. because yeah. you got a long takes reload. that weapon to reload. Yeah, I, I think that that's a pretty good give and take of it. But um, I think I think its range is just. Pitiful. The, are you talking ranges in how far, or are you talking about ranges in like how wide? Because the wide range is. Is in how far? Okay. 
uh, yeah, no, like, I felt, I don't know, I, I felt pretty even about it. How about the maps? What do you think about the maps? Um, uh, Old Town's, a f I think Old Town's a fun map. I, I don't like Checkout. That's the one I don't like. It's not that I don't like it, but out of all of the maps, it's my least favorite. Man, we're, we're opposite on that, because I really don't like Old Town, but I love Checkout. But my favorite map is actually um, Trenches. Trenches is good, but I... Okay, so you know when you when you spawn, there's that one like little lip lip up there that you, that has yeah. like pretty much nothing up there. I yeah. feel like that there that that wall next to it should be taken down, and you should be able to shoot at the middle from that part. Yeah, I I just think um, I just don't. I'm not sure about the weapon because you've got an exclusive weapon on there, which is the one shot. Yeah, I'm not so sure about the the one shot. The one shot. I think it's powerful. It's... The, the time it takes. It's it's powerful, but then again, you also have that line that shows it if, if someone's aiming at you, and it makes that yeah. noise. I think that it's pretty even, but I, I just feel like that one that the middle spot needs to be more open to attack. Yeah. Because pretty um, much there's there's you can throw a grenade at it, or you can rush down the middle. I feel like that 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 the top spot it spawn should be open for uh, assaults on the middle. I also like quite like the the more sort of interactivity with the maps. Oh yeah. So I think although trench trenches isn't really that much activity, it's a bit more. It's quite dynamic in terms of the way the sandstorm comes in, which is really fun. Yeah. I quite like the sandstorm with the the checkout has the alarm, which spawns a smoke grenade. And then thrash ball has the scoreboard. And I, I think that's I, I as soon as the you know when it comes down, it says press Y and you can look at it. Yeah. What I hate about that is that. As soon as that bit there, as soon as it comes down, you immediately get people who start shooting it. It's you, they, you're supposed to you're supposed to wait for people to get under there, then shoot it. That, but I mean, then again, I also do that to to maybe either suppress fire or I mean, just get that out of the way because I mean that that sometimes my team gets crushed by that. I I think though that it should they should take away the why the, the look up there because if you yeah. hear it, you hear it. But yeah, I still I think that. It should be more inconspicuous about you should not know when this thing's above you. Yeah, and then and then eventually, uh, then that way you would have less people you know, sort of trying to get. Yeah, definitely. Get the, the thing and because sometimes I think it's a bit of a waste. Like, yeah, you could have the chance of killing someone, but you, you get the person who just immediately starts shooting it. Yeah. Um, I think it adds a bit more cover, though. It does. It does. That's that's one thing I re I I use it for. Um, anything else you've been playing? Um, not really. I think I played. For some reason, I played Mirror's Edge yesterday, for no for no reason. Um, I tried to play the time trial, but for some reason, EA haven't got any servers up huh. for it, which is annoying. Um, Other than that, I haven't really been playing anything. Oh, actually, I've been playing Minecraft. How's that going? That that's a fun game. I'm I, I'm crap at it. I'm, I suck at Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's it's a fun game. You know, if you can get players if you can get other people playing it with you i mean they kind of make it difficult to get other people to play it with you yeah you, you need to get ips and you need to put forward and all of that but hopefully if the game when the game releases if they have actually dedicated servers for it it probably be one of the best multiplayer play games out let me um i'm gonna give this a pause really quick to make sure that all this is actually because garage band is really making this thing look weird right now okay so let me give this a pause here Okay, last pause, promise. So, we're going to finish this wrapping up because I think GarageBand's begging me to stop right now. So, uh, let's, let's throw out some plugs here. So, do you want to give out the site you you write for? Um, it's called Tech Infinite. It's uh, you know, techinfinite, then .co.uk, because in the UK, and it, it was taken, the .com was taken. Yeah. Um, it's more of a, it's, although we do, although we do reviews, it, does tend to be a bit more of like a news kind of website rather than a, rather than reviews. Yeah, I'll have the link if if uh, if you didn't catch that or whatever. It, there, there's a link on my partners on my on Final Smash. Um, and yeah. what's your Twitter handle? Um, it's my name Harry Moy. And that's M O Y. Yeah. Okay. And you can find me on uh, Adrian X H D. One thing I want to say really quick is that. These last couple podcasts may have sounded weird because of the pitch, 
Um, GarageBand likes to record in really awkward pitches for whatever reason, and I have to sometimes go back and edit that in Audacity to make sure it's okay. So sorry about that if it sounds like lower or higher or whatever. Um, That's max for you. Yeah, it's it's. I I think this. I just checked the the time right now and it sounds okay. Um. And I guess on the website, just look forward to that. I got a lot of stuff coming up. I was playing Clash of Heroes more. I got about 10 hours logged in that game. It's great. So if, um, if, you're look, if you're looking forward to that, read my review, since I'm definitely going to have fun reviewing that game. And actually, if anyone has that game, feel free to hit me up on Xbox Live, because I'm looking forward to, uh, to hopefully playing that game with a few other people. Um, all right, so my ending song this week is, I, I, I'm probably going to pick, uh, the song Loom from the Bomberman Hero soundtrack, because Bomberman Hero, have you ever played that on the N64? No, I never played it. It's funny, because I wanted Bomberman, I wanted Bomberman 64, but I ended up accidentally getting Heroes, because I didn't know any better as a kid. It was an alright game. Um, the soundtrack is very electronic like electronica oriented and loom is the one standout track which sounds really different so I'll, I'll attach it at the end um if you want any if you have any questions comments uh suggestions anything for the podcast if you want even want to jump on here I, i'm looking forward to having guests on in uh, at you don't have to be you don't have to be like significant or whatever uh, if you just want to join up and talk to us for a bit uh send me a message anywhere there's multiple ways you can get about that um and that's it so thank you harry we'll have you on again soon okay cool all right so see you later all right speak to you later